to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. Today, longtime listener and all-around amazing cheerleader of this podcast, Debbie Pegger, joins me. Debbie is the showroom manager of the Century Furniture located in the Washington Design Center. The idea for me in having Debbie on the show, in addition to her becoming my friend, is that she has more than 30 years of experience as a designer working in retail, a design studio, and also having her own design firm before she became manager at Century. And I like the idea of showcasing other careers that you might consider within the industry. If working with a consumer client isn't turning out to be everything you hope for, or if you already know it's not going to be your thing. Now, Debbie also serves as the board of directors for the Washington Design Center, and she regularly hosts events for the design community in the 5,000 square foot Century showroom. She also served as membership director of the AS. SID Washington Metro chapter from 2014 to 2016. With Debbie's expertise, Century Furniture was awarded Best Made in America in 2012 by Made, a nonprofit which honors excellence in American design. Furniture from Century was featured at the National Reagan Airport, and this honor culminated in an invitation to the U.S. Capitol on the 4th of July to watch the country's fireworks show. Her leadership has earned the D.C. Team Century Showroom of the Year twice, most recently in 2017, with the Best Best sales record on record for their showroom. Debbie credits and shares this with her co-worker, Gloria Dominguez, a talented, seasoned, design-oriented member of this two-person team. Now, before we get to our conversation with Debbie, I want to remind you that our show sponsor, Kravit Inc., has a special code for you. If you want to have 10% off any fabric, wallpaper, or trim, you can just go to your e-design trade account. And when you check out, you use the code AWDB10. Okay. Any one purchase. So if I were you, I would plan with your next project, some really fabulous Kravit fabric or wallpaper or trim and make sure that you put a little extra dollar bills in your pocket and make your net profit margins grow on that particular project. Right? Okay. So let me introduce you to Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Thanks. Thanks so much, Louie. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, so I am very happy to have this conversation with you. For one, um, you have been a big, huge supporter of the podcast for many, many months, and I have heard from several interior designers that you were the one that told them about the podcast. And one that comes right to my mind is Wendy Danziger, our mutual oh, friend, yes. right? <laughs> yes, very much so. Yeah, big, she's big amazing. Love to, she is amazing. She's an amazing designer. And the two of you together, it's like, okay, rule the world, right? Yeah, there no, you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also Mary, her, you know, Mary yes. works for her and Mary is amazing resource and, and support system yep. for, for Wendy. And I have come to have great respect for both of these ladies. Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking forward to meeting and talking with you because Wendy speaks very highly of you, Debbie. Thank you. So, yeah. So, so That's here's sweet. the thing with this particular program today, we have two different things almost three things that we can touch on and we're going to go down the road a little bit on each probably. So one is that you have 30 years experience as an interior designer and then you came to transition in life and a move 
to move to D.C. and become the manager of Century Furniture. But in addition to that, you're also on the board of directors for the Washington Design Center. So there's lots of different little nuances here that we can pick apart. And I thought we would start with how you – I think there's probably a particular – benefit to Century Furniture, to having someone who has the experience of being their direct ideal target client. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like you have 30 years of being exactly who they want to attract into the showroom. So can you tell us a little bit about how being an interior designer for those many years informs the decisions and the things that you do at Century Furniture? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, I, uh, I, as you know, I was a, a interior designer in Pittsburgh for 30 years and worked in retail and worked in a design studio and ran my own business while I was raising my girls. And so I understand very much a designer's life because, hey, I lived it, right? Right. So um, when I, when it was a time in the economy where my husband's job had changed and we needed to continue um, it was really a very nice situation. It turned out that DC was going to be uh, our home base, uh, not only for his opportunity, but turns out for mine. Um, and what's really nice is because of the fact that I've always worked for family oriented um, uh, uh, companies. Oh Companies, thank you, dear. Companies, <laughs> <laughs> whether it was whether it was, I worked at, at, at Ethan Allen, and I worked at a furniture store up in Pittsburgh, and anyways, um, it, it Century is really the same type. They're a family of brands, but they're they're also generations, three generations of uh, a family oriented ba- business, which is the Schuford family. Mm. And what was really really nice is that. I was able to take all my design skills and put it to use in a position to help others and to empower designers, to give them um, information and understand what their goals are without them even saying a word. So it's kind of been a really wonderful process. Um, You know, as a design brain, you are creative and you're you're really thinking about all the different types of things that you want to do for your clients uh, it's really solution based it's it's really trying to be approachable and it's being a resource and i loved being a resource for my for my uh clients or and also my you know co-workers back in pittsburgh and i basically wanted to bring that with me so I really work very hard as a showroom to be uh, a resource for the designers and really got involved in uh, the community with ASID, with the design center when we moved, which was a huge transition mm. from one big, huge building to a different building and all of us doing that simultaneously mm. um, and, and did marketing uh, during that time and pretty much just understanding what it is to be in a designer's brain and be able to communicate and then transfer that right into the how of to purchase and how we can help you because that's what we want to do. Okay. So it sounds like to me that when you came to this new position that you looked at it and correct, let me know if I'm on the right track. I'm, I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm hearing that you came to this position and said, okay, I have been a designer for 30 years what are the things that have been good about experiences working with a brand um, of design center, whichever it may be, and what have been lacking? What has been lacking? What have I not enjoyed? And then you sort of seem like you attacked it from the standpoint of let me balance this out. Let me create this full on experience for designers coming in from the designer's perspective, their benefit. Right, right. And I think a lot of it is um, for, for what we do in our showroom, um, we want to be approachable. We want to be, we want to, ha- we, we really like when designers come in and tell us the story, not, okay, I need to find a sofa. Okay, well, what's the room look like? Uh, what kind of colors? What do, do they have kids? You know, it's, it's, 
it's like anything you're you want to know if you know the background we become your human search engine and we can take hundreds of sofas and all of a sudden narrow it down to you know these five i think could work and let me show you the reasons why mm. and that that is a time saver it's a time saver for designers do you find that there are showrooms that don't take this approach and don't bother to do that and just answer the question at hand. Hi, I'm needing a sofa that's seven feet wide for this space and I want it to be, you know, mid-century modern lines. Okay, let me just go show you the five that we had, as opposed the have, as opposed to asking those detailed questions. What's the use? What's the style? What's the color palette? Well, I think that... Um you have to take the time to do that. And I think there are showrooms that may do that. I'm sure they are because that's, I'm sorry, that's just basic how you're going to be successful is, Mm -hmm. is getting to know things and building relationships, which is basically what I've always done is building relationships uh, to really get into client projects. And um, I think that other showrooms will do that. um, But there are some that I've, I've, that don't. Right. So you you have to you have to take that time to do that. Mm-hmm. I to know get the that we um, ha- I had um, Kristen McLaughlin on the show uh, recently. It was episode three nineteen, and she is at the Boston Design Center, and she talked about the initiatives and the things that they do there to make it welcoming for interior designers. But of course, she is in charge of the entire design center, not one particular showroom. So the initiatives are different; they look different; they're at a different level. Um, Um, not as personal as to the showroom level. And it seems like to me, like the way she described, when you put the designer's experience in mind, then it becomes a more successful way to attract their loyalty, right? Right, right. And I I think um, it it is all about the, the experience. And so I think as a designer, if you are heard on what are your needs, what are, what's your pain points, what are, what problem are you trying to solve? You know, we, we look at it as a collaborative within the designs, within our, within our showroom and try to be like team building and kind of like, Hey, did you ever think about it this way? Because sometimes you get a designer can get focused on one thing and then not think about something else. Cause my God, the brains are full. You're like thinking about you know, 30 clients and all these rooms and, you know, you're, you're walking by a lamp and going, Oh my God, that would be great. But I can't figure out which lamp that is good for, you know? So, so we try to like take that, all that chaos and simplify it and try to be nimble. And I mean, you have to know, I think with your people skills, when to lead and when to follow, when to speak, when to listen, Mm -hmm. when to suggest. And, and, um, those are for my showroom. That's the way I. Um, that's the way we approach um, people because mm-hmm. um, we are people, right? How many people do you have? I guess you would call them sales representatives. How many do you have working in the showroom for you? Do you have two people, five people, eight people? What's your team look like, Deb? So interesting. Um, my personal team is myself and Gloria Dominguez. And so we're a two person team. So we basically run the whole entire showroom between the two of us. Um, and, and Gloria is super experienced. She's got 26 years. She's done visual. She's done repping. She's done processing. She's done. She's very versatile. Um, and together, you know, we're what they call seasoned. We've got 65 years between <laughs> us. But we're very youthful. <laughs> we are, and we like to have, I know, and we like to have fun. I love the word seasoned. It's just so softer, right? I have to say, when Nancy Gans <laughs> Kelfer and I work together on a coaching situation we do programs together and stuff like that and we do the same thing i'm like wait i get 36 years you get 32 years like this is disgusting to say i know (laughs) so we usually just say you know more than you know 40 years between the two of us we're like we can't say more than 60 years (laughs) i know i don't like it i don't like it when i added it all up you know it's sort of like okay well century's been in business for 70 years so hey you know we're we're right behind (laughs) you 
<laughs> so um, oh, it's funny. But, but I but I find that you know, like from the design center point of view, we went from a big building um, that at one time had over a hundred showrooms. When I was when I first came to DC, we were at the old design center, and there was a hundred, and then it went to seventy. And then it went to 40. And this is as we were um, trying to find the proper place for Washington, D.C. to have a new design center. Mm. And so, so now we that was a huge transition. Um, we're in the heart of D.C. We're th- we are three floors within Franklin Court building. So it's not the Washington Design Center building. Mm-hmm. It's three floors. Wow. And so, so now we have 24 showrooms. Uh, we have another floor that um, is uh, hoping to grow, and we've had some other showrooms that are interested in joining our community. Right. Um, and then we we are what we would call a co-op. When we were at the design center at the old one, it was under the direction of uh, uh, the Merchandise Mart. Okay. And so they had a marketing committee and, you know, did all the programming. Um, so for us, we have become, we are this community. We, we work together. We try to figure out the best ways to get the message and deal with websites and events and, and scheduling. And, you know, there's challenges, but it, it really, we get an amazing amount of fans that come to our events and come to visit us. And, you know, that's, that's a challenge in itself because of the way business is now being um, conducted, mm. where our research is on the internet. And um, so, it, you know, we still believe in touch, feel, and mm-hmm. human, human, human experience. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, it's kind of nice, right? Well, luxury <laughs> design is always going to be that, right? I mean, it's Correct. one thing. We, we we both know that we have designers of all expertise listening to the show, and we also have designers of all levels by choice, right? There's designers that choose right. e-design. There's designers that choose to do consultations and then let clients execute projects on their own, like they have no desire to do the full thing. And then, of course, we know that we have the luxury full, in, uh, full luxury interior designer. And the thing is that that level of full luxury interior do you agree? I mean, they're always going to need the showroom support, don't you think? That that oh, yeah, level is absolutely. always going to need to touch, feel, see, and say, yes, this is not a $400 sofa that we're taking a chance on. It's a $15,000 sofa, and you probably right. want to put your booty in it, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I also think that um, <clears throat> what I have also found is that, you know, it depends on your designer and their client mm-hmm. and – and what their budgets are, because mm-hmm. that's all very real. And I like to be very realistic with people in terms of like, you know, when something's going to arrive and, you know, managing expectations, you know, right. communications and all of that is, is what makes things work. Um, to, I wanted to circle back though, Luann, when you were asking the question on how many people is, do I have on my team? Right. Well, you know, Part of what makes us work is the fact that our team is also in Hickory, North Carolina. We have, uh, that's where the factories are. That is where the corporate headquarters are. That's where we have um, all of our resources. So basically, when you're a a showroom design account, we're like the uh, conduit. You know, you... Can this be done? You know what? I I never say no. Let right. me let me let me pick up the phone. Let me shoot an email. We do a ton of custom work mm. because that's really yeah, what the people ability. want now. Yes. They right. We build it. Okay. Can you just can we make this table this long? And would it have center supports? I mean, so can we change the species? Can we? do this little uh, something on the upholstery just to make it a little bit more special. So let me that... ask you a question about that. Mm-hmm. If okay. I were a lesser seasoned interior designer and I was coming to your showroom uh, for the first time or my fifth time, but I've really not had the opportunity to work too many times or place too many orders, would it be apparent to me that I could ask those out of the box questions or would I only 
know that by getting to know you better and then learning through conversation or through a request. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like I'm thinking yeah. if I'm new, I walk in and I see the sofa that's the table that's not the right length. If I don't ask, maybe I assume that it can't be changed. Or is there something that lets me know, ask? Okay, so let me tell you how you know. I usually suggest it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So when somebody's like, oh, I love this table. Oh, my God, this is, like, perfect. I just need – I don't want it to have leaves. Well, you know, we we can customize that for okay. you. We can we can create that. Or – and usually what happens, it's sort of like, oh, my God, custom. It's going to be so expensive, and it's going to be an upcharge. Well, then you have to qualify and say, okay, well, let me see what – let me show you what this price is without any customization. Right. Is this in, is this in the budget – do you think this is what your client would be hunting for? I mean, it's, it's, it's to help. I feel like we're here to help designers sort out those different options. And there's always so much more that we, we, we create, we produce. We have also my sister brand um, Highland house, which is a whole nother furniture line that I carry in this century showroom. Mm. And so that's there, that gives me more options to kind of come up with a solution. Um, so there's, there's a a lot of it is, um, you know, yeah. So it's, it's it's asked. Anybody can say no. Have a conversation, right? right? Exactly. And then I can tell you if it's impossible or if it's like probable. (laughs) Right. The, The idea that I hear you trying to express is that at least for your, particular showroom your goal is to run it in an open non-judgmental welcoming Correct. way so that a designer no matter what their level of experience feels comfortable to come in and get to know you and your team and your line and to know what's available and what's not available Correct. And, and that's and, a big well, thing. You know, can I is. just say, because well, I have yeah. to say the experience of being in the design center over the years, um, you know, like we just said, 30 some years, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I can <laughs> I can remember as a younger person walking into various showrooms in the D&D building and literally having someone look up from their desk and see me enter and just look down. Like, uh, like, like, totally, I don't recognize you. Right. Totally making a judgment call that because, you know, let's remember this. I started working and in window works in our business. I was 21 years old. OK, mm, right. so I'm 22, 23, 24 going into the design center because before we really had our library well stocked. Now I've got 2000 books in the darn place. But you know, before <laughs> that, you had to run in and out of the city to source some uh, fabrics and so forth. And I distinctly remember people deciding on site that I'm probably not going to be a buying client. And I also remember being distinctly like, you have no idea what you just did because now you've made sure I won't buy. I'm Now you turn out the door and go to the next one. Because, you know, I, I, maybe I look like I was a kid, but I owned my company. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was there well, to p- spend money. <laughs> right. And you spend money because you have a client that right. you're trying to service. That's, that's right. the point. Right? So it and- is very important to, because it is intimidating. Um, yeah. You know, how about if you are the junior you see I get my backup I even as a kid in 20 my early 20s I got my backup because I was the owner of a company and I did have my butt on the line if we made payroll or didn't so I I just was like okay you know what I I can go somewhere else we don't even have to have a conversation about it but I often thought about well what if I was somebody's junior and they the this my principal sent me in to look for something and people you know, marginalize me. I, I'm tasked with a job to do. I, my principal has sent me in to locate, you know, four linens in periwinkle blue. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to right. do this. <laughs> right, right. And you know what? It's, um, we've worked with students. We've had, and really, when you say you're junior, we've got a lot of design assistants. They come in to pick yeah, up that's their job, uh, the finishes. To go find and, this and, stuff, and, right? And they're, they're eager to learn. Yes. I mean, my God, they're eager to learn because they want to, 
eventually move up just right. like everybody does. Right. So and the thing why is, I always you? thought it was silly not to invest in that relationship from the showroom standpoint because that young designer is out there creating their relationships and that young designer potentially is that hotshot in five or ten years that will Correct. now do hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of business every year. And so I, you know me, I always have my baby designers in my mind. I always, <laughs> I like you know, it. just make it so that it makes sense invite them and be you know i understand people are sometimes um not serious or whatever but you can't decide that on a look you can't look up from your desk and decide that and and i i've said it many times on the show why i've always kravit has always had a soft spot for me because i not only went in there as a very young person and was always treated courteously but i also very soon after that started bringing my one and two year old daughter with me and they never yes. looked at me sideways like what do you think you're doing <laughs> you know what That's i mean right. That's and this right. is back in the day showrooms were very you know closed off and very snooty and very shishi and it always upset me so i'm so glad to know that you have a different take and of course it's paid off as i described in the introduction you in 2017 you were the highest sales on record for the the, the year was the highest sales on record for the uh, for the century right Correct. Yeah, for, I mean, for the DC showroom. Yes, I mean, it, I was, mean, it was it was it was a great year. Yay! I mean, but that and, that's a testament to you because that means that you're doing not just you know you're doing what you say you are doing. You are creating that welcoming environment. You are giving people the client experience that's important. And of course, what we started the beginning of the show was saying is that it comes from you're bringing the particular experience of when you were an interior designer and you were doing your full on client experience for that consumer client and solving their problem and listening to them and creating options and other avenues for them to for you and them to solve their design dilemmas and now you've transferred that so I think that's awesome I really do tell me some of the things that you have instituted there Debbie in the showroom to welcome more designers in you talk about like there's different events that you do what's your perspective on that and how do you create that environment for designers well, there's, there's a couple different things that um, not only do I do, but Century does also. Um, part of the showroom is that we display in room vignettes. Um, you know, there's a, a, a multiple of variety of styles, but we try to make it so when a designer comes in and with their client, that their client has a much more realistic approach to like, Oh, see the scale of this chair and how it fits in this corner while it's a swivel and see the size of that arm versus the size of this arm over across the way. And, you know, it's so it becomes a, um, a learning uh, uh, environment mm. uh, as well. And so the display and also the merchandising, it's really knowing what DC needs in comparison mm. to what other showrooms have different um, different looks. We have um, great designers for Century, such as Windsor Smith and Thomas O'Brien and Charlotte Moss and Bunny Williams. And, all, and so all of these create uh, a certain look. So that's, that's one thing. I think that's really, really important. And also, um, when we first opened the showroom, it was a, pretty much a sea of gray. You remember that? That was like four years ago. <laughs> and, and I got to a point where I'm like, no, I, I, I need color. I mean, everybody <laughs> needed color. We were like dying for color. Mm -hmm. So um, there's color in my showroom. I've got a lot of like fuchsia and some, you know, great royal blues. And I've got this gorgeous magenta wall. And mm. so it, it kind of stands out a little bit mm -hmm. as somebody's, because I need to get people to come by that window and come in. So I'll have a lot of designers who like are waiting for their memo samples and they just stop in. Hey, I'm just stopping in because I'm waiting for my memos. And, you know, they come in and dream a little bit and right. you never know what's going to catch their eye. And right. So, so that becomes an experience that is uh, really important. Um, and I also try, we have everything tagged in a retail price 
so that a designer can send their clients in. And and one of the things I want to kind of circle back to, Luann, is with the design center. It, there's a there's a much more transparent um, attitude today for design centers. Okay. We you know we we welcome the public to come in and browse, um, even though we're trade only showrooms. You know, it it gives them an opportunity to see things that they're not going to see normally, and it creates a want or a need. And then it's also gives us an opportunity to match up maybe a potential client with a potential designer. So you ask a few questions, what area, what kind of project you're working on, are you working with a designer? And then you've got an opportunity to, um, you know, connect the dots, which is really what I like to do. Okay, let me <laughs> clarify there. So what you're okay. saying is, is that, and I recall Kristen saying the same thing, that the Boston Design Center encourages the public to visit. Now they have, a, if you haven't listened to the episode 319, what she explained was, because, and I understand it's different because this that showroom is managed, that whole design center is managed by an entity Correct. as opposed to the co-op the way you guys do it. But what they do is at the front door, if you are the public, they match you with a designer and they have eight designers every day that are available to um, oh, la, 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 la. escort a, a um, client through to the different showrooms that they want to see. So what you're saying is, is that the DC Design Center, the public is invited in. They're, you know, they're welcome to come in. When they arrive at your particular showroom, you have everything tagged with retail prices, so trade discounts are not divulged. And Correct. when they express interest in something they like something and they want to move to possibly quote and purchase then you will hook them up with a designer that you personally know that's one of your clients correct and, and a lot of it is really qualifying those um uh the public to see you know they may be in the midst of working on a project i had i had a couple come in um just three days ago and I said, oh, it looks like you're really, um, you know, just talking to them and speaking to them, saying, I said, it looks like you're really uh, kind of enjoying looking and seeing the things and, and touching and feeling, you know, just kind of reinforce the fact that people are in the showroom. And they had said, yes, we are interviewing designers right now. Mm. And so one of them suggested for us to visit the design center so we can see what types of things we'd like. I'm mm. like, oh, my God, great. I love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that, I mean, that was that was that was a great wa- way for a designer to say, OK, now let's let's see what is really the right thing fit for this particular client so you know i i'm, I'm going to be wonderful to those people that's right. a that's that that's a potential that's that's potential it's right. potential period right, right. exactly know? exactly and so when you think about when you when you ask your qualifying questions like this particular uh potential client had already had their little list of designers to that they were investigating and uh, interviewing and so forth. But when somebody comes in cold and you start talking with them and they express interest in maybe possibly purchasing yada yada and you are going to say, you know, you need to purchase through a designer, when you qualify them, and you ask them their questions, like you said, the, the area they live in, the scope of the project, I'm sure the style, different things. Do you, what happens then, Debbie, is that you run through just mentally the roster yes. of designers that you know, that you work with, that come in and, pa- and patronize Century Furniture, and you think, you know what, these two or three could be good, let me recommend, and then the client can take it from there. Yes, that's correct. And then okay, I also so it let, pays I, off. I, I also, yeah. It and pays I off for designers. designers. It, right, you, right. you let the designer know. But it, it, what, what I'm making sure that our buddies out there are hearing is it pays off to be known and to make friends and to create relationships with the people in the design centers, with the showrooms like yours that are actively looking to create those relationships because then you will come to mind when they have the opportunity to make a referral to a designer because your roster, you probably have – 300 designers from the dc area but maybe you have 10 that are those 10 you know top customers of yours clients of yours that you are familiar with on a personal basis of their work and their ethic and their integrity in order to give a referral to them that's correct and i I think and i also um i also kind of try to figure out 
personality right. and how, the, the size of the project. Right. If it's just one simple procurement, then that's, that's a, that's just somebody who can help do right. the transaction. So, right. I mean, it, there, there's a, all different it, things, it, all different things. I, I, I understand that because I have the same thing at window works. When yeah. we are, we, when our retail facing business almost, you know, two or three times a month, we are in the midst or we, we begin a window treatment consultation with a, a potential client. And, you know, within two or three questions, you realize, you know, what uh, you need to do your design first, like, because they'll call you in and ask you, what should you do on the window? And the first things that Kim and I start to say is, oh, okay. So is this furniture staying? Is this carpet staying? Is this paint staying? Are these accessories staying? And first it's, well, no, I might change the sofa. Oh, okay. What kind of sofa? I'm not sure. Well, how about the carpeting? Is that staying or the area well if I change the sofa I might change that okay how about pain well and of course then you look at them you're like lady you need to go well do this first and then call me for the window dreams like what am I matching yeah. the draperies to right and right. so at that point very often the because this is not a consumer that set out looking for a designer right this is a consumer that thought they were going to call us for a window treatment walk into a retail showroom to buy a sofa walk into another retail showroom to buy a rug this is your basic DIYer and right. so like I always say they're GCing their own design project right and right. so once I ask two or three more questions and I can really really get that they are overwhelmed and then I right. will say you know could I make a suggestion that you work with a designer? And of course, right. it's then that's where our similarities are exactly the same from the roster of designers that uh, patronize window works and that we're fortunate enough to be their vendor. I have every skill level, every level of budget that um, I know their projects fall in. And within two or three questions, I'm, I can sometimes there's one that I'm like, this one is perfect for you. Call this one. And other times right. I'll be like, these two or three would all be really awesome. Why don't you have an interview with each and see which works with you. So it pays to be um, proactive in creating the relationships with the people and the um, different showrooms in the design center and to not just sure. walk in and be quiet and do your business and leave, but to say hello and get to know and so forth. Right, right, right. right. Absolutely. I love Absolutely. it. I love it. So you are often organizing events that are for enjoyment and enrichment of the designers also. Do you do that as a function of your position on the board of directors for the design center or is that through Century or is it both? Because I know you recently had Lori Weitzner there who yeah. I absolutely Ugh, adore. Love her. She was love on the her. podcast. I'll have to look mm -hmm. up what episode she was because if I, that was an, did you hear that episode Debbie oh my Lord. god are you kidding oh my I, goodness I immediately emailed Lori and that was that was kind of that was really one of these wonderful stories of where I was involved as the membership director for our local chapter at Washington Metro chapter of ASID and um, I did a, an event like a part um, an industry partners event where I invited industry partners just to get together, kind of like, let's see what we can do as an industry to help, you know, support our designers. And I have met some really, really lovely um, vendors. And one of them uh, was Pamela Viola, who did photography. And she, uh, she is good friends with Lori. And she presented me with uh, Lori's book mm. and flagged all the photos that was in that book wow. and so she came to me and said hey do you think you would do a book signing for Lori I'm like oh my god yeah and bring your <laughs> bring bring your art too and I had her for photographs hanging in my showroom and so let's think about it is this a century event was I selling century furniture no I was promoting a, a, a brand that kind of accompanied the the field of interior design right. and so having Lori there speaking about her book, doing a signing, inspiring other designers in a, in a very creative way, and giving an opportunity for Pamela to, to show what she can do. Mm. Um, and then that connected with our local publications, Home and Design, who is um, a, a publication locally that we support. So, it, you know, the, the events that I had a lot last year, one of them was Benjamin Moore Paints. They had a paint called Century. 
And yeah. it, you know, was really kind of funny because I had to say, okay, this is two brands. <laughs> just, I want you to understand one's a paint and one's furniture. We just happen to have the same name. Right. So it was, it was a message that we put out and we partnered together with the reps that again, I met them through ASID. So it was a great way to reach out uh, that wasn't uh, specifically talking about just the furniture. Right. You're bringing um, bodies yeah, into yeah. the showroom, letting them get to know you, letting them understand, you know, your culture. And, the, and, and of course, while they're there, they're seeing the product and the, and the furniture and the so forth that you have. Correct. Right? Correct. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Lori's episode was number 308. And I have to say that was one of the most mm-hmm. enjoyable conversations I've ever had on the podcast. Yes. She's so warm and had such um, a perspective and so many little nudgy lessons yeah. about listening to your intuition and standing mm-hmm. in your space and asking for what you want and getting clear on what you want before you ask for it. That was the big message of that podcast that for me, that, you know, she is a person who took the time to understand and it was at the prompting at a conversation with a girlfriend and she shared that but took the time to understand what she really wanted and then had the courage to ask for it and that was the pivotal moment in her career and it was so so terrific for her to share that and expose that I thought it was awesome yeah she's amazing yes really really you know really unusually warm and engaging lady. So yeah, great conversation. Okay. So what do you have going on, you know, that's coming up in the coming year? What are your plans? What are, what's, you know, your, your, in your position as the board of directors, what, what do you want to tell us about that's new and exciting and ahead for your brand century and for the Washington design center that designers in your area should look out for? Um, there's, there's a few things that we're doing. Um, we're actually this summer, because summer tends to be a little bit of a quiet time in Washington, D.C., as it is in the in design industry, since we're so excited to get to summer and warmer months. Um, we're doing events by floor, second floor, third floor, oh. and fourth floor. So the month of June is for the second floor. Uh, there is an event at Jay Lambeth, um, which is a showroom right across the hall from me that is having uh, an artist and it coordinates with wallpaper and paint or I'm sorry, wallpaper and fabric. And, and I apologize. I don't know the name off the top of my head and I'm doing, you know, something old fashioned. I'm doing an ice cream social, except I didn't call it an ice cream social. I'm doing <laughs> know what the scoop is for century <laughs> and Highland house. And I'm going to have everything bad for you to eat because it's kind of fun and it's summer and you, you kind of do that. Right. That's fun. That's <laughs> right. Cute. So, and crab, it has something, and they're on our floor and Holly Hunt. And so then in July, it will be events on the third floor. And then in August, it's events on the fourth floor. So um, it's something that they can, the designers can look at the designcenterdc.com and see where these events are um, so that you can do that. So that's something to do that we're doing um, the marketing committee. You know what I like about that? I just want to say there, what I like about that is that it's one thing to encourage as the board of directors for the building, for the individual showrooms to have events all through summer, even though the inclination is to say, oh, the heck with it, it's summer, right? (laughs) Right, Um, right. To have events for the designers who are in town or working. And you know what happens too is I'm sure what's part of your thinking and your marketing is you have designers that are going to visit the D.C. area that are from, I don't know, Oklahoma that doesn't yeah. have a design center, right? So you want you don't right. want it to be a ghost town for them, right? So I think that's Correct. awesome. But I love the idea of by floor because if randomly everybody picked a different day, it doesn't feel like as much of a party, right? So when you come in for the month and everybody on one floor is doing something special on all different days, it, there's an energy, right? Is that the right. idea behind it? it? Yes, it, it is. And, it, and it's, it's something that's a little, um, it's just organized by floor because when we do our market events, we do one in the spring and one in the fall. That is something that's very scheduled. You know, we've got a keynote speaker. Somebody's having lunch. Somebody's having a breakfast. Somebody's having a book signing. It 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 varies, uh, and then that that has to be scheduled 
And, you know, there's 24 showrooms. Let's say that's 24 events, and there's only eight hours in a day. So right. there's going to be some overlap, and you're not designers are not going to be able to attend all of those, but they're going to go to the ones that are most important to them, whether it's to meet um, a keynote speaker or whether it is to know about a new product uh, that's being introduced by a company. Right. So, um, and and so the the... April or the spring, uh, actually we did it in March. The spring market is more design oriented and the fall market is more business oriented. Okay. So, so we do that. And we also, as far as the design center, we're doing, uh, we've done for the last two years and we're planning it for this year as well. We do a holiday um, uh, dining kind of Oh, goodness. What do I want to say? It's like a, a holiday event where people do beautiful tables oh. or do some some holiday decorations. And it's a way for the designers to really kind of express themselves that way. So you and invite the, the, the designers to do these tablescapes? Is that what you mean? In other yes, words, the showrooms yes. don't do it, but a designer does it? Correct. And Correct. how does so, a designer get selected and lucky to do that? Well, you know that's the whole relationship building. I'm go. just gonna, there I'm just go. gonna it's say who it. You know. <laughs> right? It's you who you know and who knows you, right? Yeah, you know. And and not only that, they they um, I the last two years I had people, the two designers that that are really good clients that's of ours, right. okay. and and that was sort of like a wonderful way for it's a marketing opportunity for them. They get to show what they've done. Um, they're using century furniture. I mean, how perfect is that for a right. dining room table? And I chairs, like that right? idea. And then they probably invite, if they have an email yes. list, they invite their client yes. list in to just see and have, be part of a little celebration and show off how they design a table and blah, blah, blah. Correct. I love it. And we, yeah, and we, and we try to, we always um, coordinate with a, a local charity too so ah, that that nice. that also you know so it's it's all about that month of giving right nice. Um, nice yeah and you know the design center also supports local show houses i mean there's a lot of things that uh, we try to really mm-hmm. have happening all around mm-hmm. um with especially with some of the local uh organizations asid aif DC, uh, you know, a lot of all those different alphabet. ones. All, all, yes. the, all the ABC, XYZ of designers. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. I, I think that's awesome. And of course, you having been for 30 years a designer in the Pittsburgh area without a design center at your disposal, you understand how nice and how important it is when you travel to an area with your family, even, that if there are events happening that you can feel like you can look up on their website ahead of time and coordinate a visit maybe while you, your husband or your wife the opposite partner takes your kids to the zoo and you go to the design center or something Correct. like that or you bring your family with you and let them see a little bit about the work that you do mm-hmm. so I think that's awesome I think that's really really spectacular I love your whole frame of mind on it Debbie I love the, the way you. that you're creating the client experience and that you're education and your your own uh, work experience informs it and brings it to a more personal level for an interior designer so that you really have your handle a, a pulse on what it is that they, they value and they need and what can how you can support them and that you're providing that there at century and century sounds like an awesome company as well oh, that's amazing yeah three really? generations family owned i love that that's always so fun and so important Yes, yes, it's real. It's really, it's really quite um, a privilege to be part of that family and to have the support of our director of trade showrooms, John Welker, and and uh, you know one of the things that I that I really like um, that I just I have to point out, which I know this sounds totally off key, but one of the things that we do in Century is that we have our own trucking. So our trucking service. So what happens is when someone orders a piece of furniture from the showroom, it gets shipped by freight to a receiver because a receiver has to receive it, take a look at it, make sure there's no service issues. And, you know, so and if there is, that's why I'm there. I take care of that. 
But the the advantage to that is that Century cares about their furniture and they don't want to put it on a trucking line that's going to get it banged all up because yeah. that's just more problems. Yeah. So in order to eliminate problems, having Century Services who actually delivers the furniture from the factory to the receiver is just one other way to make the experience of buying Century that much better nice. as well. That is nice. So there, there's all there's all one there's really a lot of um, wonderful ways that we um, that we the way we work yes. and you, the way you work from uh, the from the company just trickles all the way down because it's what they actually Alex Schuford who is our uh, president and CEO and the man in charge <laughs> um, it, he he calls it the century way it's mm. the century way is the way is the way we care and it's it's family and um, it it makes a difference it really makes a difference so yeah I'm I'm very proud to be part of that uh, that's that family it makes a difference that's awesome that's really nice Yay. and I I have to thank you for sharing your perspectives here today and it occurs to me that it also could be something that a designer out there who has maybe worked for somebody for many years and is just feeling like, I don't want to work for somebody. I don't want to be in this environment, this end of the business any longer, but what could I do? Or maybe it's somebody that's had their own business and wants a new challenge, a new horizon, or doesn't want the responsibility of payroll, but is still jazzed up about the industry and is wanting to put in a good, you know, solid week of work, um, that this is an avenue that a designer can go to, or even a, a designer coming fresh out of college, this is a very viable avenue to go and work at a design center for a particular showroom and a company and to have your foot and your, your hands in the field, and yeah. but, but in a different way, a different capacity. Because we're not all cut out for every possibility, right? Like we're not all cut out to be, you know, a, a self-employed entrepreneur. That's, that's not, it's a, it's a particular skill set that can be learned, but not desired by everybody, right? Some people, you know what I mean? So, and I love it. I love it. And I love how you come to it after 30 years because you, you know, it like <laughs> probably, you know, not that it's easy, not, there's not one part of me that believes that it's easy, but I, can relate to having the yeah. new challenge of a new way of doing business in your field is, is cool. Yeah, it is. It's, it's really, it's kind of fun to see what you, what I personally can bring or what Gloria can personally bring and what we can do to make the show. And, and you know, the industry's changing. So mm -hmm. you have to be able to be really nimble and flexible and feel the pulse and, and react to the pulse and, and guide the pulse. And, right. You know, it, 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 and, and that, and, I, and to me, I feel like that comes with experience being involved in all aspects. Right. So right. it's really, it's really important. Right. So yeah. Okay. Fun. Terrific. Awesome. Oh, so God. well, thank you so much. I really oh, do God. appreciate your being on the show with me today. And more than that, Debbie, I really do appreciate and acknowledge the support that you have given me through social media and through sharing the podcast with the designers that come into the showroom it has not gone on notice by me and i i definitely Sweet. do thank you for that oh my gosh well i'm i'm a huge fan and i i keep thinking oh my god if i was just you know like 30 years younger i could start all over again with all this knowledge that <laughs> you know, i mean i i'm in the, i come from the day where you know we use graph paper and, yeah. you know, and, and then a t and t square and you know all those little the you should do floor plans with the magnetic right. you know templates and you know, it, which which I loved because it's it helps you think three dimensionally. Right. So um, it, it's 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 really it's really um, I love to see how the industry has changed and how some things are still the same, mm. and that's what's interesting. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Business okay. is business at the end of the day, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That, well, that it's the point of interior design. It's yep. a business. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Singing my tune now. Uh, right. Thank you so much for joining me today, Debbie. Thank you so much, Louie, and I really enjoyed it. Have a good day.
Debbie runs a design-minded showroom. Uh, does I should say designers-minded showroom, right? It's easy to see how she brings her entrepreneurial background into cr- this process of creating relationships and doing business with Century. She makes it easy. She makes it simple. She makes it fun. You can hear it in her voice. And I love her advice in creating strong relationships with the showrooms at your local design center. There are several advantages to this, okay? The first is, obviously, you increase your product knowledge. You know, the more more you spend in there and you understand what can be customized, what can't, um, what is it like to sit on this sofa, this, this side chair, whatever it may be, it has only the benefit of helping you when you're sourcing your projects, right? The other thing is that you, as Debbie explained, inc- increase your opportunity for referrals and possible collaborations with that particular showroom. So it's just like everything else. We say that we refer the people that we know, like, and trust. So all of these showrooms have consumers walking in and talking with them and possibly wanting to purchase, but they've got to do it through a designer. And so you want to be the one at top of mind. All right, you also have the opportunity to meet with the celebrated guests when they come into the showroom for events like Lori Weitzner. Wouldn't have that have been amazing? And if you're not sure, go back and listen to her show. Then you're going to be completely jealous that she was at that showroom. All right. All of these are bound to improve your business and your business expertise. So the next time you find yourself in the Washington, D.C. area, please visit Debbie at the Century Showroom and tell her that you heard her on the podcast. I know that she's going to love that. Before I go, I want to take a moment to remind you about Camp Chroma. This is your online on-demand resource for becoming an expert and expert color strategist. If you're thinking about adding paint consult packages to your website for a little extra income while you're sleeping, make sure you streamline the process so that you are not spinning your wheels out on those consults. If you're going to put it in there for side income, right, you want to go out and do it quickly, efficiently, and confidently. All right. That's how you can do that. If you go to campchroma.com and find out all about that. And then let's not forget my Doma Studio, which is exactly where you create those packages to sell while you're sleeping. What a powerful combo that we have here in our two sponsors. So campchroma.com and also mydomastudio.com slash a well-designed business. All right. Are you coming to the Las Vegas market? I hope that if you are coming to Las Vegas market, that you are going to give serious consideration to joining me on Saturday, July 28th for the first stop on the Power Talk Friday tour. And if I just said that to you and you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back and listen to the exact previous show to this, last Friday's Power Talk Friday, okay? Or go to my website at luannigara.com slash las dash Vegas, okay? Luann Nigara dot com forward slash LAS dash Vegas. All right. You can hear, you can see everything on the website. You can hear all about it on last Friday's show. All I'm going to say to refer to you right this minute is it's going to be pretty darn epic and it is very limited to a very few number of designers. We have signups already. I'm so excited. And I am really looking forward to spending the day with you. And that's all I'm going to tell you. you got to go listen to the show or look at the website and see what I'm talking about. All right? What are you going to do today? What action are you going to take? What thing did you learn from the show? Any idea? Any aha moment? Would love to know it. More than that, I would love to know that you did it. All right? Go out today. Decide to be excellent. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.